This is another practice to finish all your braking in the straight before a turn. When you consider the gripping ability of the tyres, it is best to apply the brakes while the car is travelling in a straight line. To use your brakes effectively, finish reducing your speed before entering a corner. Use curbstones and guardrails as your marker to time your braking when you drive. A car that is turning is affected by centrifugal force, a force that tries to push the car outwards towards the outside of the turn. When speed is constant, the strength of the centrifugal force is determined by the radius of the turn that the car is making. This also means that as the car's turning radius becomes bigger, there is less effect from centrifugal force on the car. Imagine going around a corner at the largest radius or arc possible. You would enter the corner on the outer side of the track and you would be at the innermost side at the centre of the corner. Then you would go through the outer side of the track again at its exit. This is the out-in-out -out manoeuvre. Now let's try actually driving out-in-out -out through a corner. Continuing from lesson 17, try driving through a corner in an out-in-out -out line. Drive on the outer side of the track at the corner exit, going to the inner side of the track, then pass through the outer side of the track on the way out of the corner. 
The key to driving smoothly is to use the full width of the track. Try driving through consecutive corners in an out-in-out -out line. The basics are the same, where you drive on the outer side of the track at the corner entry, going towards the inside of the track as you turn in, then going wide to the outside as you make your exit. Try connecting two consecutive corners in a smooth out-in-out -out line. Try driving an S-curve where you drive through consecutive left-hand and right-hand corners one after another. In a loose S-curve with mild turns, it is effective to drive in a straight line that connects the peaks of the curves. Avoid turning the steering wheel as much as possible and connect the peaks of the curves so that you can drive through in a straight line. In an S-curve, you need to turn the steering the other direction at one point, and the timing of the steering operation is very important. Make sure you turn the steering in a timely manner so that you can smoothly connect the peaks of the corners.
A tight 180 degree turn is called a hairpin due to its shape. Here you will practice actually driving this type of turn. In a hairpin you must watch your timing for getting on the throttle. Hitting the throttle too early or suddenly may make your car go wide or disrupt its orientation. Decelerate adequately before entering and once you are in, hold off from accelerating again until the car is pointed towards the corner exit. Continuing from lesson 22, practice a hairpin corner. Again, do not rush your throttle or suddenly go flat out. Properly reduce your speed, enter the corner, then hold off on accelerating gradually again until the car is facing the exit. This is the graduation test for the beginners section. You should now have the necessary skills to drive efficiently around a track. Remember what you have learned and try to drive a full lap without any errors.